understanding in a world where there are lots of different technologies surrounding electric motors. What the flux is the difference between axle and radial flux? The first thing to say is they're actually quite similar. So they're both surface permanent magnet machines. And really, if you think in a, in, use an example, in a surface permanent magne magnet machine, all the magnets are arranged on the outside of a cylinder. And in an axial flux machine, all we've done really is, is to turn that surface, if you imagine, through 90 degrees. So this cylinder becomes kind of a pancake with a hole, so it's now more this, this kind of shape. You know, it's a yeah. surface and a hole. So instead of the magnets around that cylinder, they're just placed around this axial surface. And the flux direction is then going across the air gap, across a, a flat planar surface, whereas in the, uh, in the radial machine, it's going across this cylindrical surface. Okay. And that, that, that's, that's really the difference. So yeah, they're, they're, they're more similar than they're different in that regard. So if they are so similar, what are the key differentiators? I've heard the term unbalanced pull used as in, in some cases. Yeah, okay, so unbalanced pull. So if you think about, if you put all the magnets in a cylinder, what you get in the, uh, in the magnetic circuit is, or in any magnetic circuit, is it wants to find um, the least reluctance path, and that, that's like a, an analogy to electrical resistance in a way. But what it means practically is you know, the magnets want to stick to the stator. So if you just imagine you know, a, a north and a south here and some, some steel here, then that north and south will want to stick to the piece of steel. Now, kind of obviously, you know, there's, there's a north and a south this side, and the whole thing's symmetrical, whichever way you look at it. So in that regard, it's balanced pull. Now, if you think about you know, the axial flux machine, we've got these north and south now displaced on this flat surface and they want to leap onto the stator. So in order to balance that, what an axial flux machine sort of, I say it has to have, it doesn't have to have it, but in practical implementations do have this, is to have yeah, another rotor the other side of the stator, and that, that balances that pull, so it's, it's now symmetrical again. But we need a whole extra rotor and another set of permanent magnets to do that. Interesting. And so from a power density point of view, I have heard it argued that axial flux motors have a higher power density than radial flux motors. How do you feel about that? There's some key differences. Whilst we talked about the similarities, and now in fact it's, it's really a, a pretty straightforward turning round of that air grab from, from a cylindrical surface to a flat surface, it becomes more difficult to achieve high speed. Um, and to achieve power density, it's kind of really uh, you know, the product of two things. It's, it's high torque density, and it's moving that it's moving that torque fast. Yeah. So, you know, where, where the ultimate lies, I guess time will tell. But if you look in the marketplace, what we see is that um, axial flux motors, you know, can't achieve high speeds. I think there are some other challenges around the, particularly the continuous rating of the machines, where you know, we might build a 30 kilogram machine with four and five, four or 500 newton meters of torque and. Maybe there's a similar 30 kilogram machine as an axial flux machine, maybe makes a similar amount of torque, you know, 350, 400 newton meters of torque, something like that. So they're, they're kind of not so different, but in the axial flux machine, maybe it only achieves, you know, 60 kilowatts or say of continuous power. Yeah. And in our radial flux machine, with our advanced cooling techniques, we're achieving, you know, upwards of 300 kilowatts in the same, in, in, in the same sort of uh, mass and package. Yeah. Yeah, so there's some pretty enormous differences in, yeah. in, in, in power density, particularly continuous power density. So we're talking there almost a factor of five difference in power density. So if the power density is so good within a radial flux motor, why use an axial flux motor? Uh, it's a good question. I mean, one thing that an axial flux has got going for it is you can make the motor in, a, in such a small axial space. So if you imagine the end windings on the teeth, they're now in that kind of radial and circumferential plane. Yeah. So you can achieve quite good torque density where the axial space is really constrained. Amazing. Thank you for the insight. Very interesting.